Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to everyone that today stay with us across the world. I'm Savina Sarsitano, I'm an artist and one of the co-founders of Esprit Sveda, and tonight I'm very happy and I'm very honored to present a new project called the Salon of Esprit Sveda. The idea born during this pandemic period on a very deep reflection on what we can do, what we need for build a new world, maybe based more on solidarity, collaboration, and cooperation. The Salon of Esprit Seda wanted to be a space, a virtual space, and also a real space, because actually now we are virtually from Italy and Paris and Barcelona, where there is also an audience directly at the Esprit Seda, the Institute for Culture and Art. And the idea born just in, to put together not just the art world, but also the culture, economic, politics, literature, different, uh, uh, different uh, aspect of our society that give us uh, some reflection about uh, art, culture, literature, cultural diplomacy, social change, uh, artist residency, gallery, so today is the first episode and each time will be a different person, different guest from different parts of, of the world. And tonight I'm very proud and I'm very happy to introduce our uh, first special guest. There are two young entrepreneurs, two young, um, two young, I can say, two young uh, entrepreneurs with a big passion and a big dream. And I'm, I'm very honored because I know them person, personally and uh, I know how much time they invest, uh, how much energy in their project. Why I started to invite them? Just because I think uh, that we need the future generation. I think that we need to listen also to the, ad, to the young people, what they had to propose to us. Because if we want to really to change some things, if we have a lesson from the pandemic period, that it was in terrible crisis, not just from economical point of view, but also from value, from uh, uh, socially, we need really to collaborate together. And if you wanted to collaborate together, and if you wanted to create a new alliance, a partnership, we needed to give the voice to the young people before. And for that reason that I choose our, for our first episode to invite uh, Vladimir Devamus and uh, and Alex um, Christian. I, they, they have a very interesting project that uh, is born from their own idea. And that's called the Art Residency Television. And today with them, we go to travel in South America. So we go to discovering what happened there with them. And after maybe we travel a little bit for the future, also maybe in Africa. But I prefer to leave it to Vladimir and uh, uh, to Alexandra or Alexis, uh, how you prefer that I call you. I think Alexis is more like my I feel like a thumb. So now it is a kind of my salon. So I prefer to have like friends. And um, so I gave them to the, the, the voice uh, to, to explain their project. What is in, so innovation? What is it, this artist in television? But before to give them the, the words, the stage, I prefer to spend two words to them because uh, you can understand also from their background how they really invest the time because uh, Alexandra, Alexis is studying also uh, communication and uh, press relation in Paris where she started to really to work very soon and to be on the field. So just to know from a theoretical but also practical but practical way. She works in a multidisciplinary festival like Japan Expo and, and the others. And after she moved in Barcelona, so if you can see there is always a link with also our Espronceda, and she attended the, the Masters in Arts and Culture Management at the International University of Catalonia, uh, where uh, 
she started also there to work uh, and um, on the artist in residency to have this practice. And after this, she still continues her, her project. And it was a very good example in which way also the project of from Erasmus, because she get an entrepreneur Erasmus so to get more uh, to develop the, to develop their own idea and just after to to develop this uh, interesting projects so that since then from 2017 she started to work full time with passion never stopping and never stopping to uh, to believe in the project vladimir de vamos is also um, very multidisciplinary person because uh, he works, uh, he studied the arts uh, and the market uh, at the School de Paris, they, they call the Métier de l'Art et, la, et de la Culture. Uh, and after she worked, she started to work uh, also for gallery, international market. So they had, uh, both of them, they had a really very, from, from the beginning, the interest also to get directly in the, in the, in the, in the market. And um, after that, also he moves uh, in Barcelona, where he also he studied his Erasmus projects uh, in at the University of uh, um, Arts and Culture Management of the University of Catalonia, where I suppose they met. But it's just my <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> and um, and it was is interesting because why I know very well because I had the pleasure and the honor to work with Vladimir because he started to uh, to just like a stagiaire that every every time students come in an art center just to, to start to have a, a stage and very soon I think it's very soon it was very incredible his career became manager and what I really appreciate from uh, from Vladimir is a way to work I mean he's very professional he's very he starts very young with a very young age but from the beginning he was really professional, listening to the person, and he was never afraid to start really from the beginning, beginning, beginning. You know, that's just that make coffee or something like that. The people say, I know, but he was really humble in that. And I really trust. And when you trust people, is one of the most important in the profession. So I'm really happy to follow their career. And after he discusses his thesis, uh, that uh, was a very interesting uh, thesis. Let's call it the phenomenon of artists, residents funding and evolution of commercial practice. Could, could the residents play a role on the art market? And I think it's very, very, Nowadays, so one topic that we are still discussing uh, above all after a pandemic. And 2007, also, he became the founder because they are the two co founder of the project uh, Art and Racing Television, and they started this uh, adventure. And, uh, and for, me, uh, for me, now, today, you know, after so many years, uh, I think that we had the first uh, um, webinar when we launched the project before they, they, they fly to South America, it's already four years. So, so it's a really pleasure that to invite tonight uh, uh, and to share the experience of them. The project that they're going to show to us is really interesting because they spent almost three years in South America doing really an incredible, huge research about arts residents. Now I don't. Now they go to explain us this because there is a, if you, um, <laughs> there is a, a very nice word that is together arts residents. It's arts residents television. That is some things that is not normally. You know, normally we are used to say arts residents, but now what is this arts residents television? We're going to discovering this new world. And um, so Vladimir and Alexandra, uh, I'm very, very, very happy really to, to have uh, with me tonight. Um, because I know how much you work on that project, how much is incredible, because uh, I think that one part also from our art center, Spronceda, is uh, this way to follow people. I mean, it's important to create also human relations. So I think that nowadays we need really not just uh, have collaboration, but also to push um, to underline the importance of the human relation and also the, so that, the solidarity. So I'm proud of for two things, just because I can see you, how you get really big. And this is a very, for me, is a very honor. And at the same moment, it is also that I'm, I'm happy that we met and at the beginning you, you start this um, knowledge at this Ponceda. So now, Vladimir and Alexa, we are very, very curious 
to to say to discover your projects your this fantastic three years please leave us to dream because we need to travel even if we can't but we hope now today with you we can travel virtually and please tell us some about your project how born this idea why and what happened in south america so please i give it to you the stage Thank you, Savina. Okay. Thank you very much, Savina, and thank you, uh, Ovidio, Enric, Olga, and uh, Elia, and Alicia, and all the people from Esconcela. As you said, uh, I had the privilege to be the general manager for two years, which uh, was definitely the two best years of my life. Uh, it was hard work, but uh, we made a lot of progress with Esconcela during this time. So, uh, during my time at Esponsela, I was uh, still looking for a thesis to write and the subject of art residencies came up, of course, and I couldn't stop uh, thinking about it since uh, I started. So uh, we will make a, a very short introduction of ourselves because Sabina, you made quite a good one. So I'm Vladimir de Boma. Uh, I'm kind of an expert on art residencies, at least for the last uh, five years. Uh, I wrote this thesis, The Phenomenon of Art Residencies, where I really wanted to show that it was a worldwide phenomenon. I think from a little bit more than 1,000 spaces in, the, in, the, uh, in 2010 and uh, going to 5,000 spaces in 2020. So, uh, Alexandra. Uh, she worked in uh, La Centrale del Cirque, which is a very cool residency in Barcelona, in Barcelona too. And uh, when uh, we, I started to work on this thesis, uh, I wanted to list all the art residencies around the world using all of the networks already existing and speaking about the subject. So at the end of 2016, we listed more than uh, 1,900 art residencies in 130 in 12 uh, countries. And from that list, we noticed something really, really particular because none of the uh, existing networks were actually uh, putting the spot on the pro audiovisual production of the art residencies when we noticed that 40% of uh, all the art residencies were producing video. So we started to think about a network that would really uh, be a platform for all the videos that art residencies produce so that artists could look at the activities or even at the presentation of the program uh, directly on one platform. So we also wanted uh, that all art residencies may present themselves thanks to video. So we started the project in Barcelona with eight art residencies that we documented. We went over there and interviewed the founders and the artists who were present at that time. And we invited two residencies that already had a video presentation to come and join our network. So we had 10 art residencies on our website. And then we decided to go to Latin America because from the list we edited, uh, about 10% of art residencies were based in Latin America and only 17% of them already had a video. So we thought it would be a good start because there are not so many art residencies on this part of the American continent and we could do it in a few months. So the original plan was to uh, go over there for 18 months to interview 170 art residencies, but uh, almost three years later, uh, we documented uh, 310 art residencies between 19 countries from uh, Cuba to the Cape Horn. And we were invited to many conferences, radio and exhibition during this trip. So uh, now uh, artists in residence television today it's an audiovisual platform dedicated to art residencies. We are a multilingual network, and our uh, mission is really to gather all the audiovisual content uh, concerning art residencies on a unique hub, and then promote and inform on actualities and trends 
uh, at the international level so that all artists may know about programs around them. Our vision is to support the residences in the promotion and the management of their practices and also to guide the artists in their search for art residencies. Uh, we uh, show you here how art residencies are distributed around the world today. So Latin America represents 10%, uh, North America 20%, and Europe almost 60%. So that's a, a good start uh, to do it in Latin America. We made also a distribution of residencies in this uh, subcontinent, where we listed, nowadays we list uh, about 600 art residencies between 28 countries, including the Caribbean. Uh, as you can see, uh, Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, and Colombia are the four or five countries that um, gather the most art residencies uh, in Latin America. So um, we wanted to, pre to present to you as well how we organized ourselves because it was obviously like a big project and a big with big goals and a big ambition. So we started by creating Artists in Residence Television, which is our main platform, uh, which is a public platform online, and it, and it serves us to disseminate uh, information and to do the promotion of the artist residencies. So to do so, <clears throat> we mainly um, have videos on this website, although we write a lot of articles, but besides all the videos, you can find a lot of open calls and events. Um, we are right now in the reshaping of our, of our website. So after, after when we will be ready, it will be said in our, like if you want to subscribe to our newsletter and everything. Um, by this summer, we hope to have uh, ready our website with the new, um, a research platform for art residencies where every residencies will be able as well to become a member and to uh, post all the open calls and events and all the activities they have. Um, the second organization we have is ORA, the Observatory of Art Residencies. With this project, it's more about the research, about the investigation and the production. So with this, we mean to um, release every year a report on the global situation of artist residencies so as to understand all the shifts that are operating in this sector because it's the word in itself art residency can mean a lot of things in different regions of the world and every culture i think has its own way of interpreting this word and to to and this manifests in different kind of organization and programs and uh, a whole series of articles and of course guides that will that we will present to you afterwards and our last platform uh, ltv pro is meant uh, as an advice and support platform like it's the internet part of artist residency uh, for the section dedicated to residencies they have to become a member to access to the internet and um, in this uh, internet i will present it later all the content that you will find but um a whole uh, range of services that we offer from webinars, from personal um, uh, support and, uh, and advice to residencies and their practices and everything. And also a whole battery of conferences that we give um, to more oriented to artists or to the general audience or to um, art um, agents, in uh, art and cultural agents in the broad sense of it. And our platform as well is in three languages, so in Spanish, English, and French, as are all of our videos, because we want it for a wide variety of languages to be able to understand and to really to do their researches and to understand um, what a residency is about as well. And sometimes the, the language can be a, a clear barrier and we want it to be like the, the more open we, we could, you know. So this will be the future website on it you will find uh, the new um, uh, research engine on it to find uh, your residency with a whole list of filters that you can walk, go through and you really look forward uh, according to the project you're working on um, so you will find as well the whole um, part of the open calls which i told you about just earlier uh, the part of web TV, which is more a way to discover residencies when you're not so much um, looking for 
um, specific residences and you just want to discover and get more about the feeling like more what's affect me when I see people talking to me and all seeing the places you know so that's nice that's a nice way to discover residencies uh, a whole pot will be dedicated to all the news uh, which will be articles uh, prizes uh, opportunities or just news about the sector an agenda which uh, where you will find the uh, current opportunities the open calls and all the events and activities ongoing in the uh, residencies and there is as well the digital library which is a part where we try to put all the online free pdfs um, talking about uh, art residencies, about mobility in general, about a lot of uh, topics related to art residencies in general. Um, and uh, the last part, which are all our offers, as we said, so we have a part which is advice, um, advising uh, residencies and a whole other part that is advising uh, artists in how to create a portfolio, where to apply, how um, to get, uh, you know, like it's a kind of a notion of a lot of residencies in the world. So sometimes it's uh, very hard to make your way, you know, in it and understand how to apply, where are the open calls, where are the ones with fees, without fees and understand like a little bit about everything. And um, about the RTV Pro, so this is the residency profile when they become a member, they will access the pl this platform where they will be able to find a lot of videos uh, interviews of uh, their pairs for the residencies, but uh, um, giving advice, you know, just talking about all the tips of the um, of the job. You know, when you're on the job, you 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 learn how to do things, how to improve your financing, how to communicate better, how to collaborate, the importance of uh, having a network around you and everything. So this, there is a range of um, I don't know how many topics that. Uh, will be very helpful for residency through this and also groups and um, like a community groups you know when you, they can talk because a lot of residencies sometimes uh, don't know about the neighbor and they're like oh really there is a residency that is kind of nearby maybe we could like do events together or just you know like share and like make forests together or other residencies in the world that share the same interests or with which they want to confront so this is a good way to to begin um, and right now we will do, we will go on to the phenomenon of artist residencies. So I will let the floor to Vladimir to explain a little bit um, this report. This is a kind of a beginning of uh, the report that we made about uh, two years and a half we spent in Latin America from 2017 to 2020. So let's go. Yeah, so uh, the phenomenon of art residences, here you can see uh, the uh, year uh, of the art residences were born in Latin America. So the first art residences was created in 1988. It was the Man Chiloe, which uh, is at the very, very end of Chile, because it was during the dictatorship. And so artists fled the big cities that were Valparaiso and Santiago de Chile to go in uncharted territories where they could continue to create. So it was kind of the first art residences. And then we can see that it's a real phenomenon and we can see the same, uh, uh, continue call. Um, same line. The, line. the same uh, evolution uh, worldwide. But here in Latin America, we can really see that after the year uh, 2010, uh, really it was a huge phenomenon and the creation went just above the sky in 2017 with uh, 51 art residences created in Latin America, which is a, a lot. Okay, so when we came back from Latin America, uh, we, we couldn't just stop our investigation. We, when we uh, first arrived in Latin America, we had 170 art residencies. When we left, we knew about 310 art residencies. And then nowadays, we have a list of uh, more than 600 art residencies. As we cannot go back uh, in Latin America to uh, document the 300 last art residencies, we thought that maybe we could edit a guide that would uh, gather all of the art residencies in this continent, including the Caribbean. So uh, we started the, 
a form that we send to all our residencies so that they could uh, give us the information. We would need to write an article about their program and with some information that would be of interest in the search of the artist. Um, from those uh, forms, the inserts from the residencies, we could really uh, define what, uh, how art residencies are working in Latin America. Like 65% uh, of the residencies welcome all kinds of artists from emerging and young to established artists or non-artists with transsectorial uh, art residencies. Um, almost uh, one on two residency is open all year round for application. Artists can apply all year round without answering any uh, previous open call. And uh, only 27% of art residencies are uh, welcoming uh, people with discuss disabilities. Uh, in Esperanza, we had the uh, huge honor to work with uh, Tolkien Sakbaeva who had a cerebral palsy. And she gave me the idea to ask to all art residencies if they would be able to welcome this kind of artists because we think it's really important. We didn't put it here, but also 8% of art residencies welcome family members, which is important because artists uh, tend to stay uh, longer and longer in art residencies and uh, they prefer to be in family. Um, well, when we speak about art residencies in Latin America, we have to understand that compared to Europe, uh, the financing is a crucial element of the survival of art residencies, and they cannot count on many uh, governmental supports. Uh, some countries don't even have a cultural ministry, so they really uh, uh, are dependable on the artists, but they are always trying to help the artists to find the finance with documentation, uh, 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 letter of acceptation, so that artists can uh, gather the find, uh, the funds to come in Latin America. We uh, calculated that the average price for one month is $875. Uh, it really depends on the country. Uh, down there, you have uh, the average price uh, by country. Uh, you have some very, very expensive art residences as well, like in Brazil or in Uruguay, uh, some in Colombia, Mexico, and Suriname. Um, we know from the answers that more than 4,230 artists are accepted in residency each year. Uh, we, this number is not accurate. There are more art residences. We estimate that there are 5,000 uh, art uh, space available for artists each year, which means that around 50,000 artists look for an art residency to do in Latin America. And uh, 23 art residencies welcome more than 40 artists uh, every year. On the other hand, um, there are only 12% of art residences that are public, that are totally uh, funded for the artists, which is not a lot, but uh, 11 more percent of art residences have at least one program that is free. In general, uh, what art residences in Latin America are trying to do is to uh, make pay international artists to come so that they can finance uh, the residency of a local uh, national artist. Um, thanks to our uh, very uh, big investigation in Latin America, 33% of all of them will be on our website because 33% 30, of them have a video uh, either produced by us or by them. Uh, but from uh, all the art residencies, 71% uh, answered the graal. So you can see that 40% of art residencies don't have video but will be included in the graal. Um, as for the residencies, there are also a lot on Facebook and on Instagram. If we say that, it's so that the artists can check on this uh, social network 
to see also if the residency would fit uh, their project. Uh, on the uh, global um, panorama, we can also uh, relate to the growth of the hashtag use on Instagram, which uh, exploded since uh, almost the creation of uh, Instagram and with artists in residence, artists residency and art residency, that are the three uh, major hashtags used uh, in, the, in the subject of art residencies. So yeah, during the, it's been a year, so we have been living like in the, in the COVID time. So there are some networks that um, broadcasted some uh, lists of emergency fundings. And those are the one on, this, on the left side of the screen, you can see on the move has a big list of resources in general about all the finances that um, they list them according to the country or the continent you're in. Uh, Rizardis has been doing a survey, which we will present just afterwards, um, on residencies and artists to know about uh, what they feel, um, what their feeling is about the situation they're living in and to assess the situation as well. And uh, trans artists, that culture trans artists as well, who has put like a special list of emergency fundings uh, on their website. On the right hand, uh, you can see a list which is more meant towards uh, Latin America, but um, most of them are still uh, very international networks where you can find an, a lot of opportunities, not only for uh, to do art residencies, but to answer general open calls on prizes or to mobility, uh, cultural, cultural and art mobility. Uh, you can see that there are websites existing that like uh, fully funded residencies. So the, the, everything is in the name in that case. On the move as well, lists a lot of uh, residencies and opportunities that are, are uh, for fully funded residencies, fully sponsored. And uh, otherwise, uh, if you care a lot about your economies as well, you can look to, um, through residencies according to your budget and what you need or what you lack. And in that case, it will be a rivet, um, rivet.es, because on this, they have a search engine according uh, where you can look to, uh, to residencies according to this. Um, and from the field, so what we've been looking at uh, for a year and for, well, retrospectively, since we've been beginning uh, to research residencies, like the shift we've been looking at or the evolution of the mobility, especially now in the pandemic we're living in. So, which means that we cannot, or uh, we can very few, uh, yeah, very few people get to travel. So, which means right now people are kind of um, favoring uh, long-term programs of residencies because it's kind of easier to get visas, etc. Uh, even though uh, in a lot of countries it can be difficult to extend after three or six months periods. But uh, a lot of times artists go to run one residency this year and then they can come back next year or the year afterwards and they have like a, a, a long-term um, uh, follow-up, you know, on the project. It's not just like a one-time thing to prepare a project. Like I told, residency can be a lot of things and help you in the various um, time of the time schedule on your project. And uh, but this is the tendency that we've been acknowledging now with every of our readings and research. There is as well a focus on the local. Uh, the because of the evolution of the mobility as well, we have to be more open to what's around us more and instead of wanting to go like a very far away uh, to do our investigation. So, which means there are a lot of uh, work of mediation doing with your own context and environment. Um, one of the words that come back again and again and again in the definition of the art residency that it serves to go out of your comfort zone. And this can be it because uh, sometimes we don't know about what's just going around, you know, around you and and you know, for example, like maybe a city on the other side of the of the world. So this is time to maybe we like we focus on some things. And work of mediation is always recommended as well in residencies to do a public activities of any format. And residencies right now, because everything is shifting a lot and we are acknowledging a lot of uh, transsectorial activities in the residencies. It's not just about art, it's about art 
and society and technology and science like and you just put everything like together which is becoming not just a marginalized like the art category there but something that is um inside our society like really and that really serves us so uh, programs are tending to go like really tailor-made so people are collaborating on a project and then together they look for something to do and uh, projects right now are a lot focusing on research because it's really difficult right now to be more into the experience. So this is a, as well like a kind of temporary uh, response that we've been looking at. Um, about the virtual programs, so that's something that's been going on for a year. Uh, there is, a, this is obviously the response to the global pandemic. I don't think this is something that is gonna stay long-term, but I think uh, through virtual programs, it's a way as well that we've been uh, managing to connect ourselves way more sometimes that we've been doing uh, before. So uh, there is so there are advantages, obviously, and disadvantages, like staying at home and daily routine. And, you know, you need a residency to go out of this. And it's kind of hard. Um, uh, a lot of things are closing as well. But the advantages, uh, the advantages are the networking, definitely. Uh, the visibility and the order to creating other paths, you know, like to do things. So I think it could be there has been like a lot of projects emerging from this and the appearance of the takeover the takeover it's like a virtual program of presidency where one artist or creative or one person in general will take over uh, the social networks of a uh, cultural place or an art residency etc featuring artworks or inspirations or poems or it could be like anything so i think there's a lot of creativity in this and uh, on the right side, I told you it's about the analytical report from the COVID, like the impact of the COVID uh, in the, on the arts residencies field. So this is a survey in three, um, in three uh, time, different time schedules. The first one was uh, in September, 2020. And then there has been the second one that has been um, launched like in, in March or something like this. And out of this survey from uh, Resartis, um, we can see that in it, that 30% uh, percent of artists may participate in online residencies and 35% of residencies will offer as well virtual programs. So I think this, uh, there is a certain consensus around this idea, although everyone is not like that fond of this idea. But the reality of it is that um, half, more than half of residencies has been all canceled, modified, postponed, or shortened, etc. So I think that's a good sign, you know, from everyone that shows a will, you know, that we're still doing some things using all the tools that we have. And 12% uh, sadly have definitely closed. So, well, this is like kind of the, the pessimistic part, but I think there's a lot of hope in everything. And if those projects um, close, it's for something other to, to begin afterwards. And Africa. <coughs> so now that we have uh, almost finished our investigation in Latin America, uh, the next uh, destination would be Africa, where we already listed about 150 art residencies between 25 countries. Uh, of course, Africa is a, is a challenge. Uh, there are a lot of barriers. It's not as easy as it was in Latin America to travel between one country to the others. Some are in civil wars, others are uh, not enough developed, others just don't have art residencies yet. Uh, but we are very excited to start the uh, project, to write the project to go to Africa. We are looking for partners to, to finance with us uh, this mission. And we are particip participating in many uh, talks with uh, major actors from uh, this continent to organize our visit over there, uh, such as Art Moves Africa. Uh, right, last year was actually uh, Africa 2020, uh, which will which is postponed to next year. So we hope to be able to participate with them as well. Uh, and we also would like to uh, connect us with. Uh, uh, former networks, because in 2016, uh, two dedicated networks to art residencies were created in Africa, but unfortunately, they 
uh, are pretty closed or not very active in the last years. So we really hope to uh, influence and uh, dynamize a little bit what is happening in Africa because it's a very interesting continent uh, full of promises and uh, culturally and artistically speaking, it's, uh, it, it seems to be wonderful. So we really want to go there and give the same opportunity as we did in Latin America to African residences. Well, thank you very much. It was a small introduction. And, uh, and now we will start the real talk with Savina. Yes, um, I'm very impressed with your work. Uh, wow, I mean, this is a really incredible and a very deep research that you made. Uh, during these three years. Uh, before the starting our conversation, I wanted to, remem uh, to remind to the people that you can ask, um, send like uh, just a message from Messenger and from uh, Esproceda uh, in Barcelona, uh, Ovidio and Alessia, they will be very happy to collect questions from our guests. And also I would like to thank, uh, uh, because we are very proud, proud also that the Salon of Esperanza is under the label of the European Networking for Culture Policy and Manager Intact. So we are very proud of that and very thankful for the trust. So Vladimir and Alexander, I'm really impressed. You know, it's very difficult when somebody leave me without the words. But in a way, I was so many things that I think that I, I, I have to invite you again because um, the questions are, are very huge. But uh, um, I have like what is interesting of your also project that you uh, get personally there. I mean, you visiting uh, uh, all the RC residences. So you had this uh, very impact uh, and also uh, um, on, with the local uh, community and the artists. Uh, and the first question is, how is the people uh, uh, reacted and also the director of the RC residency about your project and idea? How was the, the reaction um, about this uh, idea would uh, create this um, art recent television. They were open, they were in which way you think they you had the feedback? Um, I, think, uh, I think in all ways, like, um, I don't know, like people are all different from one another and we've been uh, both from to, uh, to big cities and to our really like places like super far away where it's super difficult to access as well. And I think there's a tendency like people when they are more in need of communication of uh, people get uh, people, need, people needing to know them and everything. Yeah, that was, they were super grateful that we actually like took our time and everything to, to really go to them. And sometimes it was really a challenge. You can imagine like we had to take boats and vans and I don't know how many collectivos, you know, like to get there and everything. So um, most for all, you know, like out of the 310 residencies, like we've been like really well um, uh, welcomed, you know, and actually we had this kind of way to travel and we tried to exchange one uh, promotion video that we made out of the residency and in exchange we would sleep in the residency for a night or two. So it was our own experience as well as kind of super micro fast residency like for a day or two. So like a full experience, but like in a very short time. So it sometimes it was really intense, you know, like um, meeting these people and just uh, having like a lot of information like this, you know, in so little time. So but very, you know, unforgettable, really. Every residency is different from one another and they all have like their, you know, it's not just the residency, it's the people who make them, you know, so that's how, why, why it's special. Yeah, and I, I was also really surprised about, you know, the uh, financial aspect because actually in Europe we have, uh, yes, there is a, uh, um, several grants or fellowship and everything. So I think in America, in South America, is more difficult. So the majority are like uh, they need, a, um, they have to pay for the residency. And I think there is more like projects or at residency with grants or with fellowship for private or, or, or public sector. And my question is also, uh, do you think that uh, it was interesting also the presentation that you made also after, you know, what has happened 
after the COVID, because it could be also an option maybe to open kind of a virtual residency in a way to give you the possibility to more people also from out of from South America, um, maybe to visit and to do residency um, without uh, to uh, just uh, to cut the, the fee from you know traveling and, ev and everything so the cost. So maybe also that one can improve the number of the residency or the people or this uh, cultural exchange. Do you think that will be some positive effect uh, in the sense of uh, of uh, this more like uh, opportunity uh, with the financial, with um, virtual uh, residency, or do you think that they need uh, still is uh, some things that depending from each government, you know, that is the culture maybe is not in the side of the culture policy or just, or maybe the, or maybe the private don't really invest a lot for also economical crisis. So, so do you think they could be improved if this, uh, kind of virtual residency or not? I, actually, I think uh, uh, many, many art residences in Latin America answered to the pandemic by organizing more uh, digital activities, not only art residences, but continuing to uh, uh, create links with their own community uh, because uh, the community also have been uh, deprived from uh, cultural spaces during that uh, crisis. Uh, actually, in Latin America, the COVID-19 is uh, really, really bad. Uh, many, many countries are not out of the wood yet, like uh, Brazil, where the situation has worsened a lot. Uh, I, I, I should say that we were really, really lucky during our uh, almost three years trip over there, because uh, we felt that some tension were uh, rising in some part of uh, Latin America. And when we came back in 2019, uh, many, many countries such as Ecuador, Peru, Colombia had some uh, uprising in, the, in their countries due to, uh, in general, economical uh, and social issues, uh, sometimes also with uh, minorities such as, such as uh, indig indigenous population or the LGBTQIA plus uh, communities, uh, for instance. So we were really lucky to escape just before uh, this uprising started, which already modified uh, the way people were consuming culture. And then we were really lucky to do not be traveling uh, when the pandemic started, because uh, first of all, it would have stopped totally uh, our journey. Uh, we would not be able to cross from one to another country. And, um, and besides many art residences, just put in hold all their activities for many, many months. So they wouldn't have been able to welcome us and speak about their project because they wouldn't know uh, what would happen next. And uh, now for the last few months, I really see art residences started again, starting again, their activities, uh, really respecting all the uh, necess necessaries, um, uh, just uh, uh, respecting all the uh, pandemic yes. areas, yeah. yeah, rules, uh, so that they are, they are not responsible for uh, the spread of the of the COVID. Uh, but really, it it started again right now. Uh, we hope so, at least. But to, to add on what Vladimir has been saying about all the uprising and all the crisis, I think it's been similar to a lot of other countries, not only in Latin America. Yeah. And I think like, um, you know, in time of crisis like this, uh, all the money for culture and arts tends to directly like shut down completely. But on the other side, artists are uh, sh should be or are or sh really like will be like always like um, the voice like to kind of address not answer but address you know all the issues and try to enhance like all the uh, consciousness you know about something so it's in these times as well that you see like really uh, movements you know that are created and are, are very strong because it's in time of struggle as well like the collaboration or needed needed like more than ever so there has been like really like uh, particularly in Latin America, we've seen all the projects um, happening there are shaped around the context uh, situation. So around 
uh, fixing an issue or trying to address like a thematic that is uh, related to the environment, to the social life, to the economy, to try to answer. And that's also why we said that right now, like the residencies were a lot like uh, unidisciplinary, then they went to multidisciplinary, and now it's uh, completely transsectorial, you know, and this is really important in the in everything that's happening. And I would like to add as well, like that, um, to build on the definition of the residencies, that is something that you need as well, like a space to live, a, stra a space to create, to produce, to investigate, and a space to share. So it's also like it should be based on a principle of inclusion, of diversity, and of equity each time. And we would like as well to create a chart, a chart, maybe you say, like um, a chart, like of practices, you know, and of things you should acknowledge before you want to uh, do a residence or things you should know, like to be respectful of the community and the place you go in when you go in in a residency. Uh, I also like, I like it very interesting what you are saying, Alexandra, because I think is a, is a, also your thesis about the phenomenon of the arts residency, you know, is a little changing uh, during this, uh, in the last years, you know, because of now, before I remember maybe 10 or 15 years ago, you were there really, it was just based more on visual art uh, or, you know, just you, you do your creation, your production. And some of the arts residents, they have some uh, inter interdisciplinary approach, you know, about activism or like art for change, solidarity, and everything. But it was just an exception open to these artists that was called engaged artists. You know? Actually, nowadays, what is happening also in Europe, there is this new tendency um, to open the doors also to the society. No, that's that became the art and the culture like uh, a pole. I mean, this is like uh, they can they became more important the role in which when they can connect the society from minority inclusion, social integration, sustainability, different topic from the society. So the action of the artist residency, I think, changed a lot across Europe. And according to what you are saying, I, I think also this phenomenon is happening also in South America in the arts residency. There's all the public yeah. actions in the street as well, like doing things out in the street in public spaces and not inside walls. I think it changed a lot. So that's a, like interesting because it's a, it's a look that there is a, a general tendency or maybe a necessity, no? just also to change the way how we considering it, the artist uh, artist residency. And um, by the way, I mean, uh, concerning your, I mean, the South America is also kind of the third class in the world, which is the more number of residents, you know, that uh, Europe is the mass of the North America. And um, and uh, I was thinking in your opinion, do you, there is a lot, I mean, uh, how is the, in the, the um, the interest, for example, from European South or Asia, um, foreign artists to go South America. There is still a few, or there is a large number of foreign artists uh, going to the um, in South America for an artist residency. The average uh, from the um, in a, the art residencies uh, more from South America, or in the international are are growing. I I'd say it's 50-50, really. 50 /50. Uh, I think we see a lot of Europeans because there is a facility for yeah. Europeans, obviously, to travel uh, kind and, of anywhere. And uh, North American. Yeah, and North American as well, because they're just like above, so I think it's kind of close. But we've been, uh, people have been telling us a lot about the difficulty that is to connect um, for, with artists or with art residencies directly from Latin America to Africa and both ways and the both with age Asia as well. Like sometimes they tell us that we always have to find an intermediary that is coming from Europe or from North America and we would like to do directly an exchange, you know, but we always need like the support from an organization or to finance or to just shape the thing from another organization. And I think there is a need for the people to really uh, structure themselves so they can go directly and connect directly themselves together without needing another entity from another continent, you know, and that is something that has been really um, uh, uh, like put, like the word was put on this topic. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's changing also, yeah, from different kind of cultural relation that also has a South America with different countries. But I think it's increasing also because of, from my point of view, what I really, I know from South America, how it's increasing also, you know, the research in contemporary art. I mean, they are became um, each year strongly than other countries and uh, and there is also the quality that i can i I've never been there so in south america so just what i see so you can confirm i mean just what do you think that about also the, the role of the contemporary art from the production of the artists from like the biennale and everything so is increasing you no know? is that the quality is high i guess uh, from um, in it depends of i guess it depends from the different countries from south america I think the 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 thing is in Latin America you, you don't really have uh, places for the art market as strong as uh, New York or or in Europe or in China, so it's always really hard uh, to to see how uh, young artists, emerging artists, uh, may uh, continue their career uh, for a very very long time because of the lack of economical opportunities uh, after the production part. So yeah, Latin America is very, very interesting because there is a lot of production, there is a lot of investigation, a lot of uh, very uh, trendy topics because uh, we, we are speaking like almost every day now for, for the uh, last years about Amazonia, for instance, where so many bad things are happening right now and where artists are really fighting uh, uh, for, for the preservation of this uh, forest. Uh, but um, after that, they don't really have a place where they can sell uh, the, the artworks. So uh, it's always this uh, duality in uh, Latin American production is that they have a lot of idea, but uh, not so many people are ready to buy, uh, to buy the concepts yet. Yeah. And that's the first thing I, I think that your project is, is innovative in a, in a way, because it's not just a, you know, a platform for art in residence. I think it's something more, giving also this uh, idea uh, to go in deep on the country from different perspective, you know? not just the art in residence, but also from uh, um, comparate uh, from the other countries. Uh, and, uh, and I think that is not just uh, help the artists, you know, to get more maybe involved or maybe just to get in information but at the same moment also for the art market or for the collectionist or from other people that they are interested in what's happening in these countries mm -hmm. and that's a, this is a, I think this is an inter I mean I, I think your project is a, this a innovative view because uh, you can give a global vision of what's happened and for sure and also the other aspect that, that I think is, is really relevant the fact that you go directly there, so you spent years on the on, so you, your research is made on the field and not just on the, um, on on some like uh, information or, or like a review or research by um, uh, by uh, by different like uh, books or, or or interview like virtually. So I think that the, the and the, I I guess that today you know that is we are this COVID period and you Alexandra and Todd and Vladimir that uh, South America was really disaster in, in each country it was really a disaster with a lot of uh, problems from economic uh, and social and art and art and the culture they were really they are fighting to survive in in a way um and that i think also that that's the, your idea you know, can be also including in this uh, new discussion you know, in which way we can use also the part of more uh, virtual platform, other like technology for you is like video television is a broadcast, but it's interesting in my opinion, because it's not really just, uh, you know, the relation between, uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, also when you do research, you know, is just uh, your computer and you're finding, you know, the best or, or not, but you don't have really getting in, in inside. And uh, so that is my impression about your project so that you really get insight on the country. And so you can really say, okay, maybe I like that. So that is a point, uh, I think, I don't know, but I, in my opinion, what is about your uh, 
um, presentation that uh, I have to be honest, there is so interesting and full of from different aspects that you started to reflect not just from an artist's point of view, but also from different uh, uh, point of view, from culture, from also economic. And, uh, and that's, I think, is um, some things that we don't still have. So for that, I want to say really great job. Um, and um, I'm sure that you still have to prepare a, a lot of the documentation, but you are thinking also to uh, also from the, um, the website to create a, a kind of guide, uh, some things that can also help the art market. Uh, actually, we have uh, various projects in the box. Uh, right now, the most important one it, uh, is the Graal, the Guide of Art Residences in Latin America, which yeah. will be released in uh, this year if the global situation allows it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe by October would be great. Uh, we would like to edit a guide uh, so that art residences can shoot their own uh, video presentation from all the advice we can give them from our experience in Latin America and how to really make a great presentation so that really artists may see if the video, if the residency would fit a, a kind of project, any kind of project. Uh, a third guide would be a construction of portfolio for the artists so that they may uh, really uh, gather all the documentation they will need to apply in residency. And our last uh, guide is uh, management, is a guide of management of art residencies for people who want to create uh, the, a new residence and where we will gather many, many advice, not only from us, but also from uh, professionals that we had the privilege to interview during our journey. So uh, it's quite a lot of work, but uh, yeah, we are not stopping here now. And uh, with yeah. uh, all three other projects, mm -hmm. uh, the Observatory of Art Residencies, uh, Artists in Residence Television and RTV Pro, plus uh, our next mission in Africa. Uh, yeah, we have... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, you're... Your passion is, uh, I think, the most important in life uh, when you have a, a pa the passion. The passion, you know, can really realize the dream. And I think you are the very good example because I'm sure that behind there is uh, so much work uh, that's not easy. Also from a financial point of view, you know, to finance the project uh, and also to collect uh, all these materials. But uh, I can tell you, I mean, I had... Um, uh, I was really glad to this conversation because it inspired me to, to other I ideas that's very important when you present a project. And also, yes, I think it's interesting because uh, I think that uh, the fact that we should try to have this uh, worldwide co collaboration, cooperation, and the artists, because according to what is listening to you, I think it's the same phenomena that happens also in Europe, uh, that they, we put art and the artists and culture kind of the key crucial, you know, may, maybe words or, or the key words of, for a new future, you know, because it became more and more important art and culture, even if they're fighting between a financial support. And uh, so I, I think that thanks also to you, uh, if you can confirm, I think this, this tendency is also in South America, you know, the importance of the mobility, how it is important, you know, the mobility from also the artists to uh, to traveling and to get also their uh, um, contribution because uh, I think that from uh, an artist in residence also according to your experience uh, tell me if I'm right uh, is not just the the fact that an artist go in residency and do the production of his project or her project but it's also a way how to have a cultural exchange and to create you know also networking and also to support and to giving support to the community where is also above all in difficulty in country so in that sense uh, I, I i think that is um is really important the projects uh, and uh, you could confirm that but i think i had the impression that also in south america there is uh, this uh, tendency to give more and more importance to culture artists and art you know more like uh, uh, in multidisciplinary intersectorial um, approach. From what I heard as well is not just 
like as you said, is like putting your body in another context and having an exchange with it, with the people, with this community, with the place. But then like what I've heard in the uh, last discussion I had with uh, about uh, African art residency, it's really important as well to come back to your country and to make live like your own community as well through this experience that you had and not only uh, uh, thinking about going like very far, like it's good and I think it really opens the mind and it's a source of inspiration like really greatly and it helps like to get like really uh, the most open-minded you can have, but it's important to um, as well like come back and to, to your country and to as well think about um, transfrontier mobility as well not only go like to uh, other countries like very far but make live like your own region you know and create this community that you have and that sometimes you want to exit but it's important as well like that for countries that are that don't have like a lot of culture to have this experience and then to to really but uh, i also think that um artists when they go in residence they must go with uh an open mind but also uh, with the will to contribute to the local context and uh, there is a really great public program in chile from the government and because chile has so many uh, small islands where there is uh, no culture no cultural center or art space uh, they created this uh, huge uh, residency program where they send 30 national artists to 30 small islands where the artists go, but without a project. The project will, uh, will be born from uh, the necessities of uh, the local population. And the aim is, okay, not only say, you're an artist, you come with your, you, you have your way of painting and you will go and do the same. No, here, when you go in residence, you, you look at the context and then you connect with the people who live in this context and try to find not only solutions, but maybe uh, food for thought, so that the next generation, the people living on the island, finally see the beauty of being in such a place because the artists come with wide eyes and say, wow, you are so lucky to be here. And most of the people will say, well, you know, it's very, very calm and not so many things happen. But once you open the eyes of the local communities, which is uh, the mission of the artist at the end, uh, it's a great experience where the artists contribute to, uh, give value. to give value to to the places. To show the value you know, to give. Yeah, you are perfectly right. And I think nowadays that, you know, that's a, when you are talking, uh, I had this uh, in mind and you know, on this image, you know, there is also this uh, actually, this necessity in a way to you know protect to save our planet everything is based also on, on that you know also on the um, i was thinking also about you know the agenda 2013 and what is talking also about you know sustainability from the heritage i think that one could be one also the example in arts residence that they discovering the territory discovering the tradition discovering everything so, and the and sometimes uh, you know i think that also the role of the artist and uh, and 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 is also that one is not just uh, traveling or there in residence but just uh, also bring some part of the culture with them and sharing what maybe the other they, they don't know. So it's also an historical exchange. And I think in that nowadays that also I actually like in Europe, we talk about this kind, this kind from first like an heritage point of view. I think that is really, really important. Above all, what you were, you were saying, and thanks Vladimir to sharing this um, small story about Chile. It is very interesting because there is so several beautiful country with a nature like Amazon that nobody knows. And I think that for that, I really support your project because I'm really uh, uh, waiting for the videos because uh, was really I like in, in your project uh, and I invited the people that you know listen to us uh, to really if they invite to support or maybe to give uh, if they want to be part and be, be in, in touch with you because uh, sometimes uh, we don't uh, you know we, we just uh, have uh, some uh, inf in information that's okay 
but you don't you need also some time to get to get in you know to traveling across and to see what happened on the other side so there is a difference it's just like a text with image when you can have really a video telling a story you know about the residents and artists you know can also for empathy sometimes you choose the place where you wanted to go because you feel at home in that place mm -hmm. so for that I, I think that your project is interesting because uh, Sometimes the people un under evaluate uh, um, and don't underline the importance from an artist also to find the second house or maybe the second soul, you know. And this is important. And you can sometimes just following following some image or video that say, I want to go there because I'm sure that there I can give my support. And, and for that, uh, I really appreciate your work. And I think that you have to continue on that direction. Mm -hmm. because uh, you are doing a really great job that I think we need and also from the artists you know because uh, I think that we try you you, you um, I think you um, underline the importance for the artist residency but you do also a very uh, great job because in the same moment you support uh, and you help I don't I, I'm sure that you know that uh, also the country where you've been hosted or, or traveling so in that way in a very in a different way, you are also creating, you know, um, a networking and a bridge between, you know, South America in the other countries in during your presentation and open just the doors, you know, in a, this uh, in fantastic culture world. So, so I'm sure that when your website and everything is ready, it will be really something beautiful. And also I have to tell you that you are very proud, I mean, a brave, <laughs> I'm very proud and you are brave to go in Africa because, uh, you know, you, you choose also some countries that really they need, uh, you know, the more visibility and, uh, and Africa is beautiful country, but for sure, according to you, just the 3% is nothing about their artist residents. And they think that they have so many things also to give to us, you know, that we can we can learn. So, um, you, you know, we, we, we do hope that it will happen as it happened in Latin America. And uh, <laughs> we, we arrived over there with only 170 art residencies. But because we met so many founders and artists, uh, we could know about other places. So right now in Africa, we have 150 art residencies. But we are pretty sure that there are yeah. at least the double of yeah. that. Hopefully, yes. So it, yeah. it's, it's, it's so important to, to be on the field, to yeah. discover really the other spaces that finally do not appear on internet because... Because you don't have internet, maybe. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's not because it's not there that it does not exist. So we need to go there and uh, verify by ourselves. Yeah. The digital uh, has limitation, clearly. Yeah, yeah, no, I, for that, I think that I like uh, your project and really I'm, I'm one of your main supporters because uh, there is uh, this uh, human level, you know, humanity. And, um, and that is important. I think that, you know, that this fantastic technology world that is, is open a lot, a lot of possibility. But I think that still uh, the human contact is one of the most important value that we have. And we don't have to forget that, and not, and not we have to uh, just to be, you know, life is also a balance of everything. And we don't have to, to just to use too much, you know, internet, everything, because it became, we, we lost this humanity and this uh, uh, human contact. And uh, I'm sure that um, I'm sure for that when you come back from South America, also you change. You know, I think that also you learn a lot from them, from this side. So you come back with a, a really more uh, uh, wonderful knowledge and no wonderful background, know-how that you can share with the with the others. And uh, I'm sure with Africa will be a great a great challenge. And and I think that this country they need the people that also trust to go there because i'm sure that also when you go there in each country in for sure is also the trust that the people feel you know that you listen to them interesting in them interesting in the history and in the artists and they really open their do the doors and this is a kind of i think example of a good uh, project based uh, not only in which way we can use you know technology in which way we can use the internet the video we can uh, connect the community but also in which way we can uh, 
uh, use uh, this uh, fantastic word, this is solidarity and humanity, and that uh, is behind the uh, really passion of you. So that's uh, a really grateful from the art, but I, I will say just personally, thank you very much for your efforts in what you are doing, because it's a really, really great, great job and also helping uh, also to understand also from uh, a social and economical and political point of view, because uh, the interconnection now between culture, art, uh, economic politics is, uh, is always become more and more, uh, you know, linked and uh, try to give it in the same, give it the same, uh, in, in the same um, road. And that is a po an important point of view. I, I, I think like the art market behind what did this is. So I have really pleasure to have with me and I'm sure that I'm going to invite you again because uh, there are some points that we can really go in, in deeper. So um, I hope that you enjoy to be with us. And uh, I don't know if somebody wants to tell something. So some questions, so I don't know from Espronceda. Everyone is quiet. They are shy. <laughs> Don't be. Well, hopefully, we give a lot of information during our presentations always, so they already like fluff the sponges. No, but it, uh, it's a, you know, that's uh, interesting because also for me it was interesting. I was a LinkedIn notes, and this is uh, I, don't, I was I'm, I was really surprised because I know you that you are very professional, but you did a really high huge work. I mean, of, of research. Mm -hmm. This was and the small presentation. I, yeah, I guess it's the like small <laughs> presentation. So I don't know what about to happen, but um, for sure it would be um, very interesting to go deeply, you know, in some aspect of, of your research because also your project that you have, uh, they are quite, they are very, very uh, useful for a lot of people because of the discussion, you know, I, I think that as you, you told, you know, the COVID situation changed a lot. Now we are, I think that we are, facing a, a new challenge you know the past is the past and i don't think that we can come back like before so we need really also to rethink some aspect of our day life and also from the the market and also for sure in which way you can also help like the artists and the cultural sector but because of, sure. we have to be honest the economical crisis was so huge from uh, uh, the culture and the art sector that is for that's just to avoid the other you know um, that, that 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 we there is a more inclusion more and more of, of the art field you know and not just exclusion of other parts of the community and across the world so for that reason i think that is um, really interesting what you sharing with us and uh I'm very happy that you were with me and uh, I'm very proud of, of your work, by the way. That's incredible. And uh, I'm sure that you're going to be very successful. And um, and from, you know, as Pron said, I'm sure that I want also from, I can talk also from the other co-founder from Holger and Eric Sprengel and those, uh, Elian, that thank you also from our video and Alessia, they so stay, supported us in Barcelona. They were very happy to see when there is a successful story you know, and sharing it with the audience because uh, it's also a very positive message. And as you say, um, Alexandra, there is always positive things. You know? Even if in this disaster situation, a very difficult situation, we have also to see how hope this, what is positive. And for sure, I think that to share, with, to share your story and uh, to the, our audience is a very important also to give a very a positive message you know everything's good when you have a dream you have to follow your dream mm -hmm. and that's don't stop you know that's also the this also what the, there is art you know the artists they just follow a passion even if when they say stop you know it's much better with the difficulty and everything so I, this is a very good message also from the young generation uh, future generation because we need more you that you know you get mm -hmm. give also an, another look because we don't know, sometimes, you know, we, we live in this, our crystal world, that everything is perfect, but uh, we have, we need also to learn a new perspective. And then it's time, uh, you know, to open, uh, yeah, and to do alliance also with, with you, because you have just a different perspective uh, that combined with experience that could be a perfect alliance and collaboration. Okay. Yeah, I would say like collaboration is the key to everything, right? Like obviously <laughs> and more yeah more yeah no for sure so i hope the next time i can host you personally in this process so we can do like a very big video 
um, exhibition of, and also invited the South Latin American community that in Barcelona is quite a very, very, very strong. And so it's very nice. I think they're very happy also to exchange. So uh, Vladimir and Alexandra, thank you very much for your time, for your great presentation. And for sure, uh, we'll be again together in the next uh, months. And uh, good luck with your projects. And uh, for everyone, uh, if you like to be in contact with Vladimir and uh, Alexandra, you just please go to their website. Uh, and they are looking always for sure if we need to, we need also to help them. So we need also to try to support their project, their ideas, uh, and everything. So, so let's uh, be um, solidarity in that. Uh, and uh, don't feel free to contact. I want to say thank you to all Espronceda and uh, also um, I was um, to say thank you to my um, my friends uh, of this adventure co-founder Holger Herrick uh, that they were with me and also with uh, Elia that was started with you uh, Vladimir. So thank you very much and see you soon uh, um, somewhere. I don't know, <laughs> but for sure we can meet again. Thank you, Sabina. Sure. Take care. Thank you, Take everyone. Care. Bye. Have a good night. Hasta luego. Good night. Bye-bye. Ciao. -bye. Oh.